comes a train, a busy little train, rushing up and down on the daisy line. Mummies and daddies, the grandpas and the grannies, everyone's aboard on the 809. Here comes a train, and here comes driver Ted too. Wahey! Here it comes, here it comes, here comes a train today. Here comes a train! Welcome to the Cotswold Wildlife Park. I'm Uncle Nick. Hello, Uncle Nick. Hello, kids. And here are two friends of mine. Train driver Mike and driver Ted. They're just having a nice cup of tea before a busy day on the Daisy Line Railway here at the park. Driver Ted's coming along today to help driver Mike. They're going to drive the train around showing people all the amazing animals that live here. But please keep your eyes open for Driver Ted. He's a lazy little bear and can often be found snoozing on the job. Now let's leave them to prepare their train while we go and look at some of the other amazing trains we're going to see today. You can go anywhere on a train. Come with me, I'll show you. The trains are rolling down the track, a clickety clack, a clickety clack. The driver toots a whistle on the old pull chain. Up the hill and round the bend, a clickety clack, a clickety clack. You really can go anywhere on a train. From Birmingham to Clacton upon Sea And from Amsterdam to Amsterdam and Nottingham Or just from A to B Oh, up and down and all around A clickety-clack, a clickety-clack You really can go anywhere on a train The trains are rolling down the track A clickety-clack, a clickety-clack The postman's got a letter, what does that contain? Across the bridge and through the field A clickety-clack, a clickety-clack You really can go anywhere on a train From London up to Liverpool or Manchester From Birmingham to Clacton upon sea And from Wrexham down to Exeter and Nottingham Or just from A to B oh, Up and down and all around A clickety-clack, a clickety-clack You really can go This train is called Firefly, and it's a working copy of trains that were around 170 years ago. It's a lot wider than modern trains, as in the 19th century, trains ran on two different widths of track, broad gauge and standard gauge. Just like when we cross the road, trains also need to be told when to go and when to stop. Let's see how that's done using the old signals. When the signal man pulls the lever, it makes the signal move downward, so the train knows it can go. And when the lever is pushed back, the signal goes up, telling the train, STOP! From their signal box, the signal men can also move the tracks so that the train can change direction. These are called points. But let's leave our signalman and the firefly and go and find out what Driver Mike and Driver Ted are up to. They're driving the train! Oh yes kids, so they are!
Now, keep your eyes peeled because we're going to pass lots of wonderful animals on the train ride today. Can you see any? Oh, it's Lucy the Llama! Gordon the Goose! And yes, Merlin the Meerkat! And you know who that is? It's Driver Ted! Yes, and isn't he doing well? A zebra! Zara the Zebra! Oh, yes! Looks like they're enjoying the ride too! And Camilla the Camel! Shall we give her a toot? Let's leave Camilla while Driver Mike and Driver Ted continue their trip around the park and go and see some mighty steam trains! Yeah! Before a steam train can begin its day, it needs to be filled up with coal. Steady now. This train can hold six tons of coal, which is enough to last it all day. The train also needs to be filled with water. 3,500 gallons of water will fill this one right up to the top. That's over a hundred bathtubs full. But why do those trains need coal and water? Good question, kids. The coal is burned in the firebox of the steam train, which heats the water in the boiler, turning it into steam. Like a kettle? Exactly, kids. But in trains, coal is used to heat the water, not electricity. So it's this steam which pushes the piston rods back and forth which in turn moves the wheels of the train. Is that why they're called steam trains, Uncle Nick? Because they use steam to make them move? That's exactly right. Now our train is almost ready to go. It just needs to pick up its carriages. All aboard! Here, driver Sam is hooking up the steam train to its carriages. Come on! Everybody on. Now we're almost ready to go. Station Master Dot blows the whistle. And off we go. Wasn't that a great train ride? 
Yes, it was, Uncle Nick. Are we going to see what train driver Mike and driver Ted are up to? Well, of course. Let's go and see. Haha, well, there's driver Mike, but where's driver Ted? Can you see him anywhere? No, Uncle Nick. Well, I wonder where he's got to. Oh, goodness, there he is, having a snooze on the platform. Wake up, Ted. The train says without you. Driver Ted, driver Ted, the little bear with a sleepy head. Get up, get going, let's have some fun. Put a bar to the bar, there's work to be done. Yeah! Oh, dear. Ted's missed the train. Lazy little bear, he's missed seeing Leo the lion. And Juan, the Orinoco hog. Who are we passing now? Oh yes, it's Ruby the Rhino. And Eddie the Emu. While driver Mike continues his journey, unfortunately without driver Ted, I think we should take a look at some... Tube trays! That's right, kids. They're also called underground trains because they can travel underground. These trains take people all over London to 275 different stations. This driver is driving one of the 59 trains that run on the Jubilee Line helping to carry three million passengers who use the tube every working day. What's the driver doing, Uncle Nick? Good question, children. He's controlling the doors to the carriages so people can get on and off the train. He watches the platform on a special screen so he can make sure everybody gets on and off safely. Now we're going underground. Look, the train's slowing down as it's coming into the station. Do these trains run a call as well? No, children. Modern trains run very differently from the old-fashioned steam ones. These tube trains run on electricity, which is supplied through a third rail. And off we go, on a journey underneath the city. This is Liverpool Street Station. Trains leave from here to go all around the east of England. But how do you know which one to take, Uncle Nick? Well, this clever board tells you all the information you need to know. This train, leaving from Platform 5, is called a Pendolino, and it's one of the fastest trains in the country. It's faster than the average train because it's very clever. It tilts when it goes round bends in the track without having to slow down. Does it get its electricity from the tracks like the tube trains? Well, nearly. The Pendolino gets its power from overhead electricity cables, which is a more efficient way of powering a high-speed train like this one. Here comes a train, a busy little train, rushing up and down on the daisy line. Mummies and daddies, the grandpas and the grannies, everyone's aboard on the 809. Here comes a train, and here comes driver Ted too. Whoa! Rushing up and down on the daisy line Mummies and daddies, the grandpas and the grannies Everyone's aboard on the 809 Here comes the train and here comes driver Ted too Whoa hey! Here it comes, here it comes Here comes the train today Here comes the train! And this is the bullet train from Japan 
It's one of the fastest trains in the world. How fast does it go? It can reach speeds of up to 187 miles an hour. That's almost as fast as a Formula One racing car. Now that's fast. Yes, it's a lot faster than the little train on the daisy line. I wonder how driver Mike's doing. Do you think he's found that lazy little bear yet? Ah, here's driver Mike, but still no sign of driver Ted. No, oh, that's not him. That's Terry the tortoise, munching on some yummy grass. Ew, yuck! And Merlin the meerkat, again. And here's Vera the pot-bellied pig, having a good old scratch. These are baby goats. Baby goats are called kids. Like us. Yes, and here are their parents, Billy and Millie. But wait, hang on. No, it can't have been. Ah, oh, yeah, was it? No. Aha, there's driver Ted having a nap with the goats. Wake up, you sleepy little bear. You're supposed to be driving the train. Driver Ted. Do you remember the old signals used to control the steam trains? Well, I want to show you how signals work on modern trains today. They're very different. They're like traffic lights, but for trains. Are they also controlled by levers, like the old-fashioned ones? I'm glad you asked that. No. They're controlled by computers, like these ones. This is the control center. And this board shows the route of all the trains traveling around the southwest. Here, watch as passenger train ID28 passes through a signal. There she goes. Did you see the signal change color, just like a traffic light? It's very important to have signals with so many trains running up and down the track. We don't want to have any bumps. Now this is the signal man and his job is to watch all the trains and the signal and make sure the computer is doing its job. And if it isn't, he controls the signals by hand. Here comes the train! That's right. But do you know which train this is? No, it's the Eurotunnel train. It travels in a tunnel that runs under the sea all the way to France. And it can carry up to 180 cars in one go. That's a lot of cars. It can also take coaches, but only 12 of those. And even motorbikes. The journey only takes 35 minutes. That's quicker than the time it takes to make a cake. Mm, we love cakes. I'm sure you do, and so do I. Chocolate's my favorite. Mm. Oh, <laughs> but let's get back to the trains. This special Euro tunnel train, called a freight shuttle, carries lorries. It can carry 32 lorries in one go. That's heavy, man. Let's leave the trucks on their journey to France and see how Driver Mike's train ride is going back at the wildlife park. What a beautiful day it is here on the Daisy Line. Oh, and here she comes, right on time, chugging down the track. And Ollie, Oscar, and Orville the Otters. Wakey, wakey, Ollie! Here comes a train! Oh, in the owl's seen it. And so have the penguins. I wonder 
where Driver Mike's off to now. To have a cup of tea. And maybe a cake. Hmm. But wait, hang on, over there, did, did you see? No, not Lucy the Llama. It's, yes, it's Driver Ted. Driver Ted! Ah, now these are my favourite type of trains. Monorails. Why are they called monorails? Well, I'm very glad you asked me that. They're called monorails because unlike other trains, they only run on one rail. Ah, wait. Now, this is my favourite bit. Watch. Wow! Did you see the track move? That's so that the monorails can change direction, depending on where they want to go. Have you all got your tickets ready? Yes! Then all aboard! Let's go on a train ride! We're going, We're going on, on a train ride, where shall we go? Let's go to the mountains and play in the snow. We're singing and dancing, hip, hip, hooray! We're going on a train ride, a train ride today. Where shall we go next? Have you got your bucket and spade? Yeah! Come on, then! We're going on a train ride, what shall we see? Let's go to the seaside and play by the sea. We're skipping and jumping. Hip, hip, hooray! We're going on a train ride, a train ride today. Shall we see some animals? Yes! We might even see a train that looks like a zebra. Wow! We're going on a train ride, what shall we do? Let's go to the city and visit the zoo. We're screaming and shouting, hip, hip, hooray! We're going on a train ride, a train ride today. We're going on a train ride, a train ride today. Monorails are usually used to transport people. But not all trains do. Freight trains don't. They carry, well, everything. And their journey begins here, at the docks. Boats arrive here, full of boxes called containers. The containers are taken from the boat using this giant crane. It's as tall as seven giraffes, stacked one on top of another. Imagine that! Wow! So once the containers are off the boat, they're collected by these funny-looking machines with long legs, called straddle carriers. They look like something out of Star Wars! So they do. The straddle carrier is extremely strong. It has to be, as the containers can be really heavy, some weighing as much as 32 tons. That's like lifting Ruby the Rhino and 10 of her friends. The straddle carrier takes the containers to special bodies. These lorries can carry up to two containers at a time and are used to transport the containers to the freight train. But how do you move the containers? Good question. Another smaller crane picks the container up off the lorry and carefully places it onto the wagon of the train. Careful now. Easy does it. Watch it, watch it. Oops, oh, here we go. Now we're all set.
Well, it's certainly been a busy day. I can't even begin to count the number of different trains I've seen. So, let's take a look. You can go anywhere on a train. Come with me, I'll show you. The trains are rolling down the track, a clickety clack, a clickety clack. The driver toots a whistle on the old pull chain. Up the hill and round the bend, a clickety clack, a clickety clack. You really can go anywhere on a train. From London up to Liverpool or Manchester. From Birmingham to Clacton upon sea. The trains are rolling down the track, a clickety clack, a clickety clack. The postman's got a letter, what does that contain? Across the bridge and through the field, a clickety clack, a clickety clack. You really can go anywhere on a train. From London up to Liverpool or Manchester, from Birmingham to Clacton upon sea, and from Wrexham down to Exeter and Nottingham, or just from a We've seen some beautiful animals here at the Cotswold Wildlife Park and some wonderful trains. And Ted did very well, even though he missed the train. You're right, but now it's time for train driver Mike and driver Ted to go home for their tea. And uh, I think I'm going to join them. Bye driver Mike, bye driver Ted, goodbye children. Bye! And it's goodbye from me. Uncle Nick, goodbye.